Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Avant Quads of VO. And I have got quite an affinity for Avant Quads, so I think I think I'd need to call on your help. Uh, there are many people who come to the channel that have the same and greater expertise than I do myself. So for those of you that would be so kind, you know, once you've gotten into the video fairly decently, go down in the comment section and leave your thoughts about it. I'm still going to give my opinion, but it might be a fair bit muted because, you know, every time I get an Avant Quads quad, it just speaks to me. I, I don't have any complaints about the frame design, or I shouldn't say any. There's probably been little bits here and there. But there hasn't been any sort of build problems I've had. Performance is always on point. The PID tunes are always good. There, there might be little things along the way. And that's why I have kind of think that, you know, Avant Quads is either targeting me or uh, they just build them like I like them built. And they fly like I like them to fly. So I need some help to kind of push down my bias for what I oftentimes find in Avant Quad. So if you would be so kind, if you've gotten in the video, go down in the comment section and uh, leave your thoughts. Uh, for those of you that might be doing some research into this quad, uh, also go down and read those thoughts. As I said previously, there are many, many people that come to this channel. I'm very fortunate that uh, they come to this channel, this little neck of the woods, and they have a lot, even greater flight experience. I haven't flown a five inch in years, not even one time in years. So, you know, I stick to micros and a lot of them fly a lot of micros as well. And they're all very good pilots and have a lot of experience and knowledge. And I think that's important to share. And because I do think I'm becoming, my bias is becoming stronger and stronger for these. I'm going to try to push that down a little bit in this video. By the way, if you are interested in the Avio or really any quad that comes from Vaunt Quads, if you put in the code in the message box when you're ordering um, Avant. Five, the number five, and then NB, and uh, that will get you five percent off. They'll know you came from the channel. It doesn't have to be on the VO if you're buying something else, or if you're buying a frame. It's kind of like the affiliate link thing. It lets them know where the traffic came from, uh, but it also gets you five percent off. Um, I'm going to give you my opinion right now, so that you can forget it if you can here in a little bit. This comes in an HD version, so the DJI version. Version, excuse me. And I'm going to buy that one. I liked how this one fly a lot. I want to have the HD version as well. So that should tell you everything I need to tell you in this particular video. Also, I have uh, one other really long flight. Well, it's actually a really long video, but it's uh, two other flights. It's on a 650 milliamp battery and 850 milliamp battery. Uh, race day quads and cotter here and if you want to know without watching that video the flight time it's still the same sort of flight style you'll see in this video uh it's just on those different size batteries uh, 650 milliamp battery came in at four minutes and 18 seconds 850 milliamp came in at four minutes and 41 seconds which is interesting because the video we're going to see on a 550 milliamp g and b battery came in at three minutes and 45 seconds so between 550 and 650, the flight time jumped about 35 seconds, maybe 37 seconds. But from a 650 to an 850, the flight time only went up 22 seconds. So it seems like for flight time, at least in the flight style I'll show you, that a 650 might be where you want to be at. But we'll weigh everything up, we'll get the specs, and then we'll go out to that flight. The video is running Brother Hobby 1504.5. 3,950 kV motors on Gemfan 3016 tribulated props. The flight controller all-in-one board down there is the JHEMCUGF420 all-in-one flight controller. It's a square. Comes with Betaflight 4.2.8 with BL Heli M and RPM filtering with a really good tune as well. The VTX appears the JHEMCU5848. That is a power switchable from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts. I am running it on 200 milliwatts in this video. Up front here is the Runcam Nano 2. Again, I do have a link down in the video description to a version, an analog version, with the Caddx Baby Rattel. Got a Rush Cherry antenna for our VTX. 3D prints on the rear and on the front to mount our antenna and our camera. On the bottom here, they've used my favorite tape to secure the motor wires down. Uh, also, we have a battery mat down here. This is rubberized, so that should be fairly sticky. Also, we have press nuts that secure in our arms. Each arm has two nuts in it. So to change one, you only have to remove those two nuts and, of course, your motor screws. This is one of the reasons I don't have any complaints with their builds. See that wrinkle in the battery lead? I talk about that all the time. Only manufacturer that I've seen do it. They also secure the capacitor down to that wrinkle in the battery lead, so it should stay put. This is the receiver. In my case, it's FR Sky XM Plus, 
and they do stick it out here far enough to where you can press the gold button from up top. It's not buried underneath the stack. You do get an extra set of Gem Fan 3016 props. Dry weight, it comes in at 111 3 quarter grams. With the GNB 550 milliamp 4S battery, it weighs 183 and 3 quarter grams. With the 650 milliamp 4S battery from Cotter, you get a 4 minute and 18 second flight, and it weighs 188 and a quarter grams. With the Race Day Quads 850 milliamp 4S battery, you get a flight time of 4 minutes and 41 seconds, and it weighs 210 and 3 quarter grams, or pretty much. Motor post and motor post, I'm getting about 142 millimeters. The arms are three millimeters thick, and at the thinnest, they're just a little bit over five and a half millimeters wide. The very bottom plate is three millimeters thick, and the top plate is one and a half millimeters thick. Okay, so that wind is howling. Uh, the weather data says 22 mile an hour winds, and I could have picked a better flight. There's no doubt about that, but I wanted to pick this flight because it's it gives me a remembrance to uh, a day that actually wasn't very good for me. Uh, work was a struggle, things weren't going very well, and I needed to step out from the house and get some sun and just step away from work and have some fun or de-stress or take out some stress, whatever you want to call it. So this flight isn't going to be my best flight and it's definitely not perfect weather conditions because I think especially when I get up over the house in the trees, that 22 mile an hour wind, you can really, you can feel it. it. It blows me off course and you're going to hear me talk about it. Well, I mention it a few times uh, in the flight. You know, as I'm sitting there, I have that camera on the table and it's recording audio. So you'll hear me going, whoa, especially on the chimney side of the house, I get blown out quite a few times. Uh, but, but this reminds me that this is supposed to be fun. And I know I talk about that a lot, but I don't have too many rough days. I don't have too many days where I'm, you know, down or, or you know, I think I'm very thankful or lucky to have my wife and my kids who help to keep me from having those days where I might feel the effects of the world very often. But this particular day, I was feeling the effects of the world. And I, I stepped outside and I remember this flight and it, it almost washed it away. I think of those old Calgon commercials for those guys that might be my age. Uh, you know, Calgon, take me away. And I think Calgon was like a ladies lotion or something like that. But I kind of had that feeling. I'd flown three packs. This was the final flight. And when I got done, I just felt like everything was anew and I was ready to go on with the rest of the day. So I, I, I wanted to give you this flight because I remember this flight very very well and I remember the feeling and I, I think if you're someone out there Whoa. who might be uh, having one of those days like I was this day uh, duck outside go get some sun go get some wind <laughs> and go get some fly time in and enjoy yourself uh, as I said in the intro I think it's pretty apparent that I like Avant quads um, so I'm calling on all the other experts that grace this channel for your thoughts down in the comment section and I think that's it's becoming more important for me to get additional input from you guys. That way, if I am too over the top with my thoughts on something, that you're there to balance me out. Um, not to tap into your knowledge for free or anything, but as you know, kind of a small niche of the community, I always appreciate that when people balance me out and you know, call out mistakes I made or things I missed, however you want to see them. Uh, so I, I'm calling on you for this because I think Avant Quads just builds quads I like to fly. And I don't have problems with breakages. Um, this flight, I don't have any crashes. I have a few close calls and a few blowouts and stuff like that. I did have a couple of flights. One where I did a punch out. It was on a really nice day. I don't know. I was just a terrible day of flying for me. But uh, I was coming in down from a punch out. I think it was just a straight punch out over the bushes at that corner of the house. And I just didn't bring the throttle up in time. It just piled into the ground. And then I had another one on the shed side of the house. Uh, I I think it was something very similar to where I just piled in the ground and then uh, I did the beta flight air mode bounce across the Whoa. yard and into my neighbor's yard and then up against their bush and then I think I tried to take off because I was still upright and then I got stuck in a, in a some thicket of a bush or something like that. I'll show you the crashes that I can dig up. It's a relative adventure to find those crashes because, you know, I don't stop the recording because of the crash. So I have to watch the whole recording to find the crash. And then when I put them in the editor, then I have to go screw through and scrub in the editor. Not to complain, but that's why I don't do a lot of crash reels because it takes a lot of time. Probably takes as much time as it does to just make this video. But that's the end of our flight. Three minutes and 45 seconds. And you can see our battery has recovered well over 3.5 volts per cell. So good safe battery voltage. Again, that's the GNB 550 milliamp 4S battery.
And if you're really digging in deep into this quad, I've got those other two flights that give you samples of how it flies with a bigger, heavier battery and a larger battery and the flight times that you get. I've already reported that, but if you're interested in watching those, it's all one video. I think I do the 850 first and then the 650 after that, but that is linked down in the video description. It's not a video that I've published, so to speak. It's just one I've uploaded. Okay, let's start here at the back. So first, uh, these aren't wishbones. These aren't connected together. You can see the split right there. So they're just, they're arms that are butted up against one another. And I think most people like that because they are in there good, tight, and secure. They're not moving around on me or anything. There's no movement in that sort of connection there. And if you were to break one, especially if you're out racing with your buddies, you don't want to spend a lot of time, you just have to take the screws out of the side that you're needing to repair. So instead of like a wishbone design where you'd have to take up all the screws and you put a whole new wishbone in there. Uh, also note that it doesn't have a sandwich plate. It's just got that thick lower plate. Uh, so there isn't a top plate to this. We've got metal gnarled uh, standoffs and then we've got our top plate. You could... And I thought about doing this, fly it as a top mount as well. Of course, your battery size is going to be limited, so let's see. Yeah, I could have put my 550 on the top. I might see a touch of my battery, you know, because I'm butted right up against this antenna. So I might, and there's no slots to toilet tank, so we have to go this way. So if you wanted to, that might be something I explore. I just hadn't got around to that yet. I actually kind of forgotten about it until I started recording this video. Uh, you might be able to take your battery strap, run it up top, and make it a top mount if you like to fly top mounts and you want to try that out on this quad. Uh, I do appreciate their color, of course. I think they know that I'm a sucker for blue. So we've got uh, blue on the, the TPU prints. Uh, the, the flight controller all in one board there, the red bits, that is rubber soft mounting. And note above this, there is a nylon nut. And then you have more soft mounting, kind of these silicone-based O-rings that kind of suspend this section, or this section, excuse me, away from everything else. Uh, the XM Plus, in my case, is held on with a zip tie. I mentioned it in the quick specs, but in case you missed that, they adjust the receiver out so that you can get to the binding button. Sorry, that was high in the frame. So they have this all forward just a little bit so that you can get a tool down through these holes and you can press the binding button uh, to make binding available without having to disassemble the top plate or anything like that. It's not easy because those gold buttons are terrible small. So you probably have to get a flashlight out and line up your tool. Of course, be careful. Uh, everything's pretty well wrapped except for the VTX. Don't rep, rest a, a metal tool against any of the other things while you're turning on plow, power to get your... Um, receiver uh, going, or in binding mode, excuse me. You know, the, the solder work all looks very good as always. Never have any complaints about those things. Motor wire length is fine. Length of wires inside is also fine. Uh, you might wanna note, and this could be something that bothers some people, I guess, is they've taken the stem out of the antenna. It just has the, uh, the wire antenna, and then you have the lollipop top. I guess I shouldn't say lollipop. That's kind of a known brand of antennas now but so they've they've got the bulbous end and then they've just got the wire that goes down to your vtx here so there's no stem here so you can't raise this up and think well i'll just use the stem to prop it up out of there uh, no that doesn't exist it's not there i also mentioned it earlier but uh, one of the things that uh, i think many people like in these builds is to use these press nuts or maybe you don't uh, let me know if this is a, a thing that you've ran into problems with or not but uh, that just makes it real clean because the nut is pressed into the carbon and so you just secure it down. I suppose if you get heavy handed with it, it could become a problem and it gets a little bit uh, to where maybe it wears down that fitting inside the carbon and it starts to rotate and then that becomes a problem. Uh, I need to mention it as far as it not being a sandwich plate, we have small carbon fiber pieces. I don't think you can see it hardly. So this, instead of having a, a top sandwich plate, they've gone with these little plates to make sure you secure your arms down. So we've got the big, thick bottom plate that I measured earlier. We've got pretty thick arms, and then we've got what looks to be a two millimeter carbon fiber plate right here that goes uh, through the standoffs or underneath the standoffs. And they do the same thing up front. Hopefully you can see from that angle, we have those three pieces. And then you can see that those pieces don't come across the section of the body just in the front and the back so let, let's with that let's uh let's do our yeah it's pretty rigid i'm giving it a pretty good go and the way this is designed and configured i can get my thumbs in here good and narrow we've got some flex but it's it's pretty stiff 
And this is the arm layout. Of course, you do see props and view. That is an issue for some people. It may be one of those things where you're looking for more of a dead cat design if you don't want any props and view, or you have to go with an elevated camera design. Uh, this has props and view. At the camera angle, I fly. I can see it when I'm sitting there, but as soon as I arm and I start flying it, the props just go away from me. I can see the OSD better than I can see the props when I'm up and flying. But that's just me. You need to... Uh, diagnose that for your own self you know if you don't like props and view you shouldn't buy something with props and view uh the antenna wires here and i think this is again this is hmm, this is something that i have a an odd appreciation for and it brings out in my bias i think these this the antenna mounting here is something that other manufacturers just do not pay attention to who else i don't know maybe you haven't seen enough quads who else would you know, have a zip tie wrapped around their post and then secure the wire to the uh, zip tie and just leave the tip, the very, uh, can you even see that? Just the little tip where the signal comes out of the antennas are just poked out. Just enough. Just to touch. It looks like, I don't think you guys can see this. Let me see if I can zoom in. Can you see it there now? So, other manufacturers just don't do that stuff. And I wish they would. I wish they would secure their battery leads with just a simple zip tie and a wrinkle in their in their wire. Secure their capacitor down. Don't let it just dangle around or, or hope that the stiff wires that it's mounted to. And then secure our antenna wires down. Now, you know, this isn't optimal for range. Optimal for range would probably be a little bit more clearance outside of the quad and in a 90 degree. One out back, one straight up top. That would give us optimal range. But for the mounting, it's very clean and they've done it right. And you just don't see that. Oftentimes you just you get a, a quad and the antennas are just kind of dangling around. Or they, they have ears that stick way out and they look weird and they wiggle. and I don't know. Again, that's my bias. Tell me if I'm crazy. Uh, something that I mentioned recently, maybe it's in an upcoming video. I can't remember. I've recorded a couple of videos this week and you probably haven't seen them all yet. But this has motor protection. We're not seeing a lot of motor protection on quads anymore. And it's got a nice long fingernail out there, I guess you'd call that, or horn or spike. So it's going to stick out several millimeters outside of the motor. Um, and if you were to come down on the ground, it's going to hit the uh, spike first, unless, you know, of course the motor's coming down first, then there's not much the frame can do for you. Uh, but so in many circumstances of crashing, that should play a role in possibly helping maintain the motor health and also keeping it vibration free from taking uh, big hits. Uh, Brother Hobby Motors, I've flown some of them, but not a lot. And I'm curious about their durability. So those of you that are out there flying Brother Hobby Motors and crashing them about, I'm curious to know. Uh, this size is new to me, 1504.5, 3900 KV. Uh, I thought, or 3950 KV. I thought it was a good mix of being smooth. Um, some people want to know about Nachi Motors. These are not Nachi. Uh, but again, I thought it was a good combination of have being smooth and having good pop. I'm not certain the flight video I showed you shows the pop because if I'm flying at angle as I'm coming along, this is really going to be hard to see. So if I'm flying at my normal camera angle and then I don't flatten out at all before I give it that punch out over the house, it doesn't look like it's going up very fast because it's applying a good portion of the throttle to go forward because of the angle that I'm flying. So that was something in that day of, I'm not necessarily an effective pilot, but it did sure help clear my mind and head and make me feel better. Um, I didn't show the quad very well as far as how it pops. You might be able to see that better in the other video that I've got linked down below where I find the larger batteries to where I do flatten out a touch before I hit those big punch outs to give you some idea of the top end punch out. But I did that a number of times in these videos, so there should be plenty to look at there for you. Uh, as far as purchase options go, the HD version, you know, it's going to come in around $300. Uh, Avant Quads always has drop downs for ordering different things, whether it's more props, more spare arms, what have you. Again, I've got that link down in the video description that goes to the Caddx Baby Retail version. That one's not listed on their site. You have to hit that link. And if you do buy anything from Avant Quads, whether it's the Avio or anything else, if you put in the message box Avant 5NB, you will get 5% off. And they know that you came from the channel. I like Avant Quads. I have yet to run into one that has given me fits or as a reviewer has given me any problems or I haven't enjoyed flying. 
they they've all been very nice to fly. They've all been very well made. That's enough. That's enough of me. Hopefully, the rest of you that have experience with Avant Quads have left your opinions down below, and those that maybe don't, but you have been watching this video diligently, have additional comments. And if you do have additional comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate everyone's time. Thanks for watching.